I'm Ryan with creativesoundlab.tv and today I'm going to talk about four pointers that you can use when creating scratch tracks during your multi-track recording sessions. Now, multi-tracking a band is very far removed from the native state of music. The reason is, is there are so many layers and processes that creative ideas have to be filtered through before the actual idea is captured. So let's talk about the ways that you can make better scratch tracks to help preserve these creative ideas. So what is a scratch track? Well, it's simply just a, a dummy track that the musicians use to play to. And this could be as simple as an acoustic guitar with a rough vocal, and then the drums play to it, and slowly the rest of the band piles on. Eventually you can re-record that acoustic guitar, and essentially it's just there to be a placeholder, an outline to guide the building of the track. So, the four qualities of a good scratch track are Number one, it is in the right tempo. You want to make sure that you're getting this right, and there's simply no easy way to adjust the tempo of a scratch track. You may want to set up your drummer, have them kind of hammer out the song, make sure that it's feeling good before you lay that scratch track. Number two is the scratch track needs to have the right form, meaning that you have enough bars for the intro, it has the right amount of verses and choruses, it has the bridge in the correct place. You know, not getting this right can just add to a time-consuming process of trying to copy and paste, and I mean, I've done that, but it's a lot better if you can just get the form of the song right. Number three is make sure that the instrument you're using to record that scratch track is tuned. You also want to make sure that the correct chords are played. You know, it's hard for guitarists and bassists to add to something if it's playing the wrong chord. You might have to duck it out for that measure, so if it's the wrong chord, this just adds to the time in the process of recording. So make sure it's tuned and that you're playing the right chords. And finally, the fourth element of a good scratch track is making sure that if you're using a metronome, that you're playing to that well. You know, if the performer is uh, a little off, it sometimes might help to go ahead and play through the song a few times at a given tempo. Right after the final chorus, after they've had the most time to get into the song, take three seconds of silence and then start the recording of the scratch track. This way, starting at beat one, they're right in the mood of the song. So make sure that they're playing well to that tempo. If not, the drummer, when he lays his parts, will have two conflicting viewpoints of what the tempo actually is. It's the guide track of, okay, here's where I am in the song, and here's the chords and the energy, and then here's the very sterile click over on this side, and it's giving me a definitive answer of where that beat is. You want the two to be one and the same. So make sure that the scratch track is dead on to that click. So if you follow these four simple pointers on creating scratch tracks, you'll have the best experience on making your creative ideas come to pass in the final recording. Now, if you found this video helpful, I'd love to keep in touch with you. I have a website, creativesoundlab.tv, and I have an exclusive uh, members-only material that I give out to my mailing list as well. Uh, currently, I'm doing a video on uh, c converting a clunker drum set to a world-class drum sound. I don't just start with a best-case scenario. I start with the pawn shop special, something that is really not ideal for a recording session, and I teach on that, uh, the concepts of how to get the best out of your drum sounds and how to record that kind of kit. So join our community of other engineers like yourself at creativesoundlab.tv. I'm Ryan at Creative Sound Lab.